Hello! We are working on pin cushions. Here's the finished product. Here's the one I made in class. Here's the one I'm working on right now. So we're to the point where we're attaching the buttons. So choose your buttons. With the help of my eight-year-old Charlotte, I've chosen these two. Choose your embroidery floss. Again, with the help of Charlotte, I've chosen green. This will be the floss that goes around, as well as what attaches the button. For this part of the project, I'm using a tapestry needle. It's not the same as the needles we used before to stitch it up. So a tapestry needle is bigger, has a bigger eye so that embroidery floss can get through. Uh, and it has a sharp point. A uh, yarn needle is just like this, except it does not have a sharp point. You need a sharp point. Make sure your needle can go through your buttonholes. Or the holes of your button, I should say. So if that's fine, you can get started. So you need a lot of embroidery floss for this if you're going to do the wrapping as well as putting on the button. I'm going to, so I'm going to get a lot of floss, like maybe two yards even. So a yard is approximately from the tip of your nose to your finger if your arm is outstretched, like that. For an adult, for kids, and I know some of you are not full grown yet, just add a little extra. So I'm going to cut that. Embroidery floss has six threads to it. We're going to use all six for this project. Thread my needle. This can be a little tricky sometimes. I like to put it over the needle and twist and slide it off and sometimes that is easier for me to get through the eye, sometimes it's not. It might take a minute. If you have a needle threader you might want to use it. Okay, that twisty trick worked the second time. The reason that's helpful is because your six ply of Threads aren't splitting as you're trying to get it through the eye. That fold over helps that way. So I'm going to have a short tail and a long tail, but even my short tail is going to be pretty long, six to eight inches. This is maybe slightly long. There we go. And we're not going to tie it. We won't do our tying till the very end this time. So we just have that yarn looped over, or embroidery floss, I should say. I'm going to take my pin cushion. I'm going to mark the middle with a pin. On the other side, I'm going to mark about where I think the middle is. Just to get an idea of where I want my yarn going. I'm going to start, take the button I want to be the top. I've decided I want it to go on this side because it covers up less of the pretty flowers. And take my needle and my embroidery floss and go up from the bottom, close to where I mark that middle, and come up close to that other middle on the other side, and pull that through. Now I can take out my marking pins. So it's through my pin cushion. Now I'm going to go through my button. Get my button where I want it. Then I'm going to go back down through. And you see, I'm not coming out at just the same point here. Um, they do need to be a little ways apart because we're going to tie it off in a minute.
Okay. So, there it is on the top, here it is on the bottom. I'm going to pull until I have a 6 to 8 inch tail on my short side on the, on the bottom here. Sorry, I got out of the view of the camera there for a minute. So here's my long tail. I'm going to need this for tying off much later at the end. So here's my top. I'm going to pull it tight, as tight as I can. And this is what makes it go down like a dimple. So I'm going to hold it over here. You might even want a friend or relative or classmate to help you hold this tight. And then we'll tie a knot. You can pull tight while you're tying that knot. See the other side. I'm going to tie a couple knots so it stays as tight as you get it now is as tight as it will be. So got that knotted. About. Okay, so that's knotted. I'm going to go back through that button a few more times. So come up through buttonhole. At the beginning here, you have so much floss, it's a little awkward to work with, but you can do it. Back down. And you don't have to go exactly in the same hole. In fact, you don't want to because you'll eventually make a hole in your fabric. So come out close, but not exactly the same spot. Okay, so reinforce that a little bit. Now I'm going to add my bottom button, which in my case is purple. And typically, the bottom button might be a little bit smaller. See this one, it's the same kind of button but smaller. This one's close to the same size and that's fine too. You do want it to be of some size because you're going to hide your knot under that bottom button at the end. Okay, so now I've got my thread, or my floss attached to my pin cushion still. Now I'm going to just put it through a hole of my button. Bring it down. We've still got our tail here. I'm going to go through the other hole of the button. And here's the trick. I'm going to come up through the top button. Oh, my tail got caught. I just pull it, pull it out before it gets too tight. We'll do that a few times. Coming out through that buttonhole at the bottom. So these stitches are both about securing the button and making it look nice. It get a little bit tricky to find that spot as it gets thicker. Just do your best and know that you don't need to do it a ton of times. Um, so once you feel like you have enough stitches in your buttons, then you're going to come out the bottom and you're going to come out underneath this button but not through the holes. I'll show you that in the next video.